Yeah, um, I, I, I'll try and be brief. I know we have a bit of time to catch up uh, on today. And I'm just going to try to replace Smart Ocean and why we're doing this. Uh, um, basically, the premise, the big premise is that new types of development will occur in the oceans. And this is going to happen over the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And, and the, reasons that the reasons for that are that we're all subject to climate change. We're going to have to understand the oceans. We're going to have to develop new, new forms of uh, renewable energy. Timing, of course, uh, uh, people can argue about, but, but it is going to happen. We're going to need food for a growing population. And, and we begin to understand the oceans as real sources, uh, as real resources for biomaterials, uh, for applications in medicine, food, uh, material science, and so on. So we're going to see a whole series of new approaches, new approaches to marine transport, uh, you know, offloading at sea, transshipping at sea, and so on. Space is becoming, human populations are moving into coastal areas all over the world. Space is at a premium. We're going to be looking for new ways of doing transport. We're going to be looking for new renewable energies. Uh, and we're going to require new platforms to support our work in the oceans. This is a slide from the Tropos project, which you'll hear about later from Iose Castro and the Canaries, uh, showing sort of concepts for a multi-purpose service platform supporting marine renewable energy, offshore aquaculture, you can see the semi-submerged cages in the foreground and so on. And these types of scenarios are definitely going to happen. The question is, when and, and how are we prepared to actually do the business? I mean, even in the energy area, we, we're, we're all familiar with what's happening in offshore wind in the Irish Sea and so on. The fact that AirGrid and other transmission authorities are now doing serious planning for the harvesting of very large volumes of renewables along the western seaboard and in the Irish Sea, same as happening in Scotland and so on, is evidence that, that this move into, into the oceans for, for energy, among other purposes, is real. Uh, you, many of you will know about the Isles Project, which, which is a, a project between Northern Ireland and Scotland and, and, uh, and the Republic of Ireland and, and some smaller groupings, to, to, to really look at how offshore grid to harvest renewables uh, can be developed in, in the vicinity of, of, of those locations. And, and this is moving into a second cycle. So, so these aren't pipe dreams. I mean, there are real moves taking place to put these things into the sea. All of these are going to require... ICT tools, and that's the essence of what, of what the Smart Ocean Strategy is about. We're going to need the sensors, we're going to need the sensor platforms, and we're going to need the cyber infrastructure. And that's really what we're focused on in Smart Ocean and in this conference. How can we focus down on some of these areas and build on this island uh, cores of uh, real expertise and clusters of industry strength in this area so that we can be uh, players as these technologies move into the oceans. ICT, of course, is part of a much more complex technology development system. I mean, this is just a sample slide from, from uh, the, the technology readiness level uh, uh, sort of charts that, that utilities will apply for wave and tidal and other technology. And as you know, it's a very systematic, it's a very systematic business. I mean, this business can't be done on sort of aspiration and a wing and a prayer. It's serious business. And, uh, you know, if you look at sort of what happens in the supply chains for anything offshore, you, you, technology has to really be robust and proven. You won't do it with just a bit of sort of marketing spiel. It's got to work. And examples of this, if you look at a presentation I was at earlier this year, actually, in this very center, which was on sort of the insurance and finance aspects of renewables. Um, you know, there were some very interesting presentations on the way in which the financial industry looks at, uh, at, at how they finance operations offshore. And there are real lessons that need to be taken aboard by us in doing that, because you will not be able to sell products and services again, simply because we would like to see a cluster of activity in Ireland. I mean, that's not going to wash with the financial sector. They'll say, well, you can have your cluster, but we're going to get the proven tried technology to, to do this job. Um, so, so the suggestion from them, of course, is that, is that insurance be brought on board at a very early stage in the project and not let, 
left to the end of the project. The kind of things they look for, though, if you look for sample issues in insurance, you know, they want to know who is the developer, who's the sponsor, is the project being undertaken by a joint venture, what's the allocation of responsibilities, is each party playing to its strengths, how are design and construction interfaces handled, etc., etc. In other words, they drill down to every single piece of that supply chain, and they're looking for proven capability, experience, and track record. And that is the big challenge for us in trying to build a smart ocean marine cluster. We've got to start early. We've got to try to create the sort of the interactions and the early uh, exchanges and consortia building that builds that core of experience in the application of these products and services to, to their various markets. Uh, you know, this is a 10-year project. I mean, we're talking about building a sector over a period of 10 years. And what we're trying to do, of course, is to drive down cost and improve reliability and, and, and innovate. In other words, to produce products and services that are better than what's there before. So the Smart Ocean Strategy, which is linked with, in the Republic, the, 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 the government's plan to harness our ocean wealth, in other words, to increase the contribution that the marine economy makes to the national economy, the parallel strategy in Europe, the blue growth strategy, to increase the contribution that the oceans make to the European economy, does offer opportunities for us. And one of the things we're doing at the moment that uh, Adele, who, who you all know well by now, is doing is a kind of an industry gap analysis, looking at you know, what, what, where do industry see disruptive breakthroughs coming over the next five or ten years, and how can these help us define our, our research agenda. And for example, in relation to, you know, there's lots of, of stuff that you would expect coming out of this exercise, and we hope as a result of today that companies and sectors that haven't engaged so far with Adel in this will do so, because it is important for us to try to pull out some key priorities that we can focus around and try and get critical mass in terms of funding both from research agencies and from our development agencies, Invest Northern Ireland and Enterprise Ireland and so on. So one of the areas that comes out is this question of infrastructure and facilities to support development. And, you know, industry is saying we need laboratory test beds, where the ruggedization of these systems can be tested, we need to widen access uh, to government facilities, we need data centers, wireless comms, vessels, training, etc. We all know this. And actually we're well placed on the island of Ireland. I mean, we've got a series of, of research infrastructure and test sites building up. And if you start sort of in the, in the, the furthest from us down in Cork, you've got a, a significant cluster of both research infrastructure and capability in the maritime sector building up with the, with the building of the new Beaufort wave tanks, which are going to be sort of by far the biggest and the best we've ever had on this island, and the Irish Maritime and Energy uh, Research Cluster. Moving around the west coast, you know about Smart Bay already, you've heard about that on the quarter scale test site. We're building the full scale west test site in, in North Mayo, and this is, this probably is a misnomer, it's not really a test site, it's a demonstration site for pre-commercial technologies that have already been tested, proven and trialled in places like EMEC and Wavehub of of the, uh, the southwest of England. I mean, this is the full Monty, where uh, utilities will run arrays of, of, of technologies before they say, we'll have half a billion of those, thanks for a generation project. And that's some way off. And then in Northern Ireland itself, of course, we have the cluster of expertise in Queens, the, the Research Energy Centre, and in Strangford. And, and this is just a picture of the, the tidal test rig that, that Queen's operated at Strangford, a great facility to have, uh, and, and links in with other facilities they have in the college here in Belfast itself. The open ocean test facility in Mayo, uh, uh, we're starting work on the substation there. Cables will be laid as soon as kind of the potential users become clearer, because I said this is really a, a demonstration site. And, Frankly, I'm not sure that there's any technology anywhere that I could go on that site as yet. The uh, Smart Bay you know about, uh, the, the, uh, the intention here is to build up a kind of an integrated open air, open sea laboratory to support a whole range of research and technology act development activities in ocean energy, in sensors, communications, and so on. Uh, and one example of this, which uh, you may have heard about already, is the, is the acoustic monitoring project that has been developing for a number of years with, with IBM and other partners. Acoustics are, are clearly sort of noise in the ocean environment is going to be a big potential showstopper for marine energy projects in many sea areas. And developing 
uh, novel and effective ways of understanding noise in the marine environment uh, is going to facilitate the development of renewable projects in the ocean. Uh, the Irish Digital Ocean is, is, a, is a concept that is being worked up at the moment as part of the call by Science Foundation Ireland, which is the main research funding organisation in, in, in the Republic. Uh, and as part of that, we're, we're, we're putting together a, a strategy to build an Irish Digital Ocean, which will pull uh, all of the sort of the data and data sources together with the sort of modelling and forecasting capabilities into a tool that will serve us uh, marine users generally. Uh, so, so this all of course, Smart Ocean then is, is really a model for joint research ventures and it's a model for sustainable research investment. And our intention is to try and build on this and particularly to build on the sort of fantastic event now we've had here today. It is great to see the, 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 the Republic and, and Northern Ireland focusing together on the opportunities in this sector and trying to build sort of a bit of critical mass between our institutions and our companies to be able to do something effectively and make a difference here. So I like to often finish with this quote, which I particularly like from the CEO of NL, which says, let's go forward and the future will catch up later. And that's, I think, the attitude we should take. Thank you very much.